if an electric field was real or not. It was something that was a mathematical convenience. It worked. It worked for what they were doing. It wasn't until 60 years after they came up with this ish that they finally figured out the electric field actually is real, which is why it's still in the textbooks. So do people like make stuff up and then other people decide to prove it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> you got the theoretical physicists who are going, hey, under these particular situations, you can do this. And then the experimentalists come along and go, hey, let's see if we can do that. Yeah, I mean, I noticed that with the other ones, it's just like, well, this, someone made it up and then someone proved it with every single equation they do. Yeah, there's, there was uh, one of the professors at USC when I was there, uh, Yakira Haranov, who's been nominated for a Nobel Prize a few times, but who um, was, was far more productive on his doctoral dissertation than, well, almost all physicists. He, he came up with what is known as the Haranov Brim effect. And as part of this, there was this thing called the vector potential. I'm pretty sure that it's an A, it's a vector with an A over it. Um, and no idea if it actually was real or not, but they speculated that it was. And so they actually tried to experiment while he was still in graduate school, whether this actually worked or not. And we didn't have the technology, at that, that time the technology did not exist to do that experiment properly. And it wasn't until decades later that they actually did the experiment and found out it, it indeed was true. So sometimes there's a delay between theory and being yeah. able to actually do it. So in like 20 years and they proved it wrong. They still got an A on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who's now at Savannah University, or University of Savannah, something like that, that his first, the first topic he was working on in, in physics to get his PhD, he said, what I wasn't told when I first started this was that there's a 99% chance that this is pure crap. And it turned out to be pure crap, so he switched to something else. 1% chance that it would be revolutionary. So physics is the study of bullshit. Yeah. There is a certain, certain something to that. But then again, what this one is not. Right. Yeah. Someone once worded it said education, that at some point you get an education that they realize they have nothing else to teach you, so they teach you to question everything you've ever been taught. Psychology. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will, at the end of the course, will teach you to question everything that you've ever learned. So just look forward to that. All right, so they came up with this idea of an electric field. Now, since it only depends upon one charge, we don't really need the subscripts anymore, so we can get rid of that. And so we basically have a formula for the electric field. And recognize that the force on one term, so we can change that. So I had the force on one from two divided by the charge of one is equal to the electric field created by two. So I can now look at the force on one from two is just charge one times the electric field from two. This is a convenient little equation every once in a while. If we think about units, so the units of force equals the units of charge times the units of the electric field. So the units of the electric field is the units of force divided by the units of charge. And so what are the international standard units for electric field? Newtons per coulomb. Say it again. Uh, Newtons per coulomb. Yep. Wasn't sure you said per the first time. Yeah. And there is no single word abbreviation for it. They figured Newton's book along is easy enough to write. And just as a side note, No, no, doesn't apply here. Never mind.
All right, so let's take a look at, uh, let's look at the electric dipole. I get a Q and Q. Uh, one vector P here, this is S between them. And let's take a spot right there. Like I said, they're using R before, so let's make this R. What is the electric field at this point right here? So I'm going to call this point P, and so what is the electric field at point P? Well, the electric point, the electric field at point P would be the electric field at point P because of the negative term plus the electric field at point P because of the positive term. If we had the force formula, we could just divide out by whatever charge we had at point B, but we don't. So we're sort of doing this one from scratch again. That was Q, and I think it's Q on the left there. Let's talk about direction of the electric field, which comes from the formula. The electric field is in the r hat direction, which means away from the center. And the center is going to be the source of the electric field. So the electric field from Q right here, r hat is basically either away from Q or towards Q. The electric field from negative Q is centered around this one, so it's going to be either along that diagonal or, well, it'll be along that diagonal, depends on whether it's away or towards. So from positive Q here, from our Q right there, what is the direction of the electric field at this point right here? I assume Q is a positive number. What can you tell me about these three elements right here? The electrostatic constant, Q, and R. They're all positive. Therefore, what is the direction of the electric field at point P because of our Q here? Going away from it? Yes. Because all of these are positive, the electric field is away in the R hat direction, and so I have an electric field in that direction. Uh, I'm going to call this E, P plus. Instead of writing Q out, I'll just put it plus. What is the direction of the electric field because of this negative Q? Pointing straight towards that electric field? Yep. Because K and R are positive, but Q there is now a negative charge, and so we'll end up with a negative electric field, which means towards it. E, P, negative. What is the direction of the electric field at point P? The combination of the two. Which would put it in what direction? To the right. To the right? Are you equaling it out? Or? I have, I have, there are vectors that are, well, you would add them. To the left. Pardon? You go to the left. It has to be that way. Yeah. I have two vectors, both going to the left. The vertical component will cancel out because these charges are the same. Okay. Therefore, the magnitude of the electric field will be the same here. Yeah. And so I thought we were stabilizing it, sorry, for some reason. Yeah, this is not an equilibrium problem. If that's where you're heading. So the vertical components are going to cancel out by symmetry, and so we just have to figure out the horizontal component. theta there, and so E, P plus, so if that's theta, then that angle there is theta, so this becomes E, P plus cosine theta, 
and then put the other one E B minus cosine theta. Now we've already thought through the direction, so we've got to be careful of making sure we don't have an extra negative there that we don't want. But I, I know what the direction is already, so whatever we do, the component of either electric field has got to be pointing to the left. So I got my K, Q, and then over R, where's my thing? Well, R is the distance from here through there. I think I had it written over there. Oh, I just had big R like that. So I've got a skinny triangle here. This is R, this is S over two, and that's little r. That angle there is theta. So what is little r equal? Over two squared. Okay. Big R squared plus S over two squared. And then, yeah, it's over little R squared. And then cosine of theta. S two over R. I might be looking at it wrong. Which R? Little R. So S over two little r. Yeah. I don't think it's exactly what you said, but I think that's what it you comes out to that. Yeah, looking at it now, going to you. Yeah, that's right. All right. So, um, <clears throat> oh, got that r there. So that was r. So this ends up being k q s over two big R squared plus S over two squared uh, squared to the three halves. And considering I did two steps at once, let me set the twos there. I end up with an R little R cubed, which would be R squared plus F or two squared. Okay. Still somewhat good. What's a little R though? This right, so we have this r squared here, little r squared, so that's kq over little r squared times my cosine of theta, which is s over two little r, which is kqs over two little r cubed. Oh. And so that this bit right here is my little r cubed. And notice qs shows up again. And then it comes down to what kind of approximations do we need to make? We could just leave it like that. It's in that direction, so what do we... Well, I know that my electric dipole moment is acting to the right. And there's the quad magnitude of Q times S. The electric field is the other direction, so negative K electric dipole moment over two, and I'm going to factor out the r squared, so I get r cubed, one plus s over two r squared, that will tend to the three halves. And then you can take it farther if you want to assume that big R is significantly larger than little s, then you can start getting into the binomial approximation that we did last time. And you know, it all depends on when you want to stop. A 
Let's do a little number crunch in here. So let's say that Q is equal to one point, uh, let's make it 4.7 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. S is equal to 0.03 meters, so three centimeters apart, which is also a big dipole, but, and I'm looking at a point that is one meter away. And I think that, so S, R, P, and K is given. What the heck? Let's set up a coordinate system. I hat to the right, J hat up. What is the electric field at point P? Just grab my calculator so I can have an answer. Now, 10 a.m. start tomorrow for classes here. I assume if you have an online class, that doesn't change at all. Is that yet? Yeah, don't trust that exit. The calculator button's right. Uh, I have minus 0.634 newtons per coulomb. Probably take off two points for that answer. I have. There we go. Yeah. Yep. I I got the got the same. 
Negative point six three four. You said? Yeah. Means per coulomb. Getting the 0.634 is a calculator exercise that you got the formula sitting right there. Units per coulomb, those are the units. I mean, you could go through and track the units if you want to, or just recognize coulombs, meters, newtons. Those are all standard, international standard units, so this better be international standard. And then the negative I hat is telling you the direction. So, that's part A of a question, part B. If five, let's make it unrealistic, a five Coulomb charge is placed at point B. What is the force on the five Coulomb charge? This is the point when some students will go back to Coulomb's law and basically do the whole thing from scratch. That will eat up a lot of time. What's the quick way of solving this? E times Q equals F. So it's five times negative point six three four. Newtons per coulomb, I hat, and so whatever five times that is, three point one seven negative two newtons. And then we can combine it into a first semester course by telling you what the mass of the particle is, what is the acceleration, and you know, you can go from there. We will not, we'll stop it here for now.